attention to the 10th chapter of the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 10. Now, let me say this clearly, that I wrestled with whether or not I would deal with Joshua in the presence of your pastor who has dealt with him sufficiently. I wondered, was this lunacy on my part? But then I thought I should at least broach the theme of the revival once. And so here we are. Joshua chapter 10. There is in this particular chapter a rather interesting set of verses that has stayed with me for many years. And only now, as I am in the beginning of my 40s, do I understand something about it. At the 12th verse of the 10th chapter, it says that, on the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke thus unto the Lord in the sight of Israel. O sun, stand still at Gibeon, and the moon in the valley of Aegelon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jazer? The sun stopped in mid-heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. And there has been no day like it before or since when the Lord did heed a human voice. For the Lord fought for Israel. Lord have mercy. Touch somebody tonight and say, neighbor, he fights for me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There was a time in my life when if you would have asked me what I thought the essential ingredient of Christian living was all about, I would have told you that the essential element or the essential constituency of Christian life is rooted in the possibilities of love and peace. And while I am still very much a devotee of the possibilities of love and a student hereafter of the renderings of what peace might become among us, we warring people, I have lived long enough now to know that the essential element of Christian living is rooted in what some might call the night side of existence. Yeah. I have lived long enough to know that even if you are saved and sanctified, even if you are filled with the Holy Ghost with a mighty burning fire, yeah. every now and then, you still have to fight. You can be a preacher with the gospel buried deep down in the bowels of your commitment, but you still have to fight. You can sing in the choir, sing every key up here. You can be a deacon. You can cast out devils. You can raise and heal the sick. But when you get back home to your own house, you still have to fight. And I have lived long enough to know that there are some things in life that you will not get unless you are willing to fight. Therefore, let me posit before you in the presence of what we might consider tonight that for every believer there is a distinctive battle that must be waged. There is a fight with your name on it. You were born to fight that battle. I don't care how cute you are, how many degrees you get, you will not avoid this battle. It is the battle that God himself 
wrote down in the date book of your life when you were still a thought and an urge in your father's eye. So I posit to you tonight that you can pray all you want, clap and dance and shout all you want. At some point in your life, you're going to have to put your Bible down Lift up your two hands and tell somebody the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. Slap somebody and say, you're going to have to fight for it's over. I don't have a lot of time, but might I say this also to you? That most of the significant things of life will not be given to you. Nobody is waiting to give you the next 10 years of your life. Let me try it over here. Nobody is waiting to give you the next 10 years of your life. If you want another level, you have to reach into the mouth of darkness and snatch it out of the hand of the enemy. Stop somebody and say, give me that back. And every now and then, Every now and then, we have to be willing to be obnoxious about our future. The battle is set before us, unavoidable, painful often, contentious, lonely, isolating, but where there is no great risk, there will never be great reward. Having said all of that, come with me to Joshua and stand with me on the shores of this book. Peer into the eyes of a man whose life has been set ablaze, the death of his leader still burning on the altars of his heart, and yet God has called him forward. How strange it must be to stand somewhere between past and future to be the connection to that which has gone before you and still be the standard bearer of all that is to come. But whenever you read the book of Joshua, you must read it and know that this book is about the prospects of battle. This book is about fighting. It is about warring. It is about raising up arms and seizing the land. It is not about tucking your tail between your legs and asking somebody to give you a promised land. It is about turning shepherds and turning farmers into warriors, taking ordinary people and arming them with possibility and daring them to hurl all that they have against the powers of darkness. This book is about the context, the contours, the content of what it means to live and have to fight. Now consider with me, if you will, the historical realities surrounding the 10th chapter because you must understand that by the time we get to the 10th chapter, they have already crossed the Red Sea. They've already been given the commandments. They've already lived in Egypt in bondage for 400 years. They've already come through the plagues. And now they stand on the edge of what they always wanted to have. And God says, before you can have it, there's one more fight. It's interesting, beloved, because I submit to you tonight that the land was already promised. And yet they still had to fight. Because sometimes you have to fight for what's already yours. And you're not fighting to win because God said you already won. But you're fighting to enjoy the benefits of what you've already won. No, you're not with me yet. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, it's already mine but I got to fight to enjoy it. I feel something about to break out in here. 
This is significant. Don't, 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 don't underestimate this. Don't underestimate this. Because you have to understand that just because you got the marriage don't mean you have... See, just because you got the man don't mean you have what it takes to enjoy it. Yes, God gave you somebody, but you'll never get all there is to get out of it until you tell the devil, take your hands off of what God gave me. In the name of Jesus, I bind it. I'm about to get Pentecostal in here tonight. I wish somebody would wake up and hear what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that you got it and I know you got it, but if you don't fight to enjoy it, it's not worth having at all. Is there anybody in here who can take 30 seconds and tell every enemy, I'm gonna enjoy what I got? Hey, I'm so okay. I feel the praise about to break out in here. Lord have mercy. Give somebody a high five and say, enjoy it, enjoy it. Don't just drive it, enjoy it. Don't just live there, enjoy it. Don't just raise them, enjoy them. Don't just love them, enjoy them. Therefore, I would say to you this. Write this down. Sometimes the promise is not enough. There will be no manifestation of joy until you learn how to force the issue. Look at somebody and say, force the issue. That's why I love the woman with the issue of blood. She knew what it was to force the issue. Jesus was not going to heal her. He was going somewhere else. And when you've been broke down, when you've been hurt, when you've been wounded, when you've been bleeding, when you've gone to the doctors and it's only gotten worse and nobody can help you with it, when you got nobody to talk to, nobody to lean on, every now and then you will go to Jesus and say, I know I'm not on your appointment today. I know you weren't planning to help me with this. But every now and then you'll tell God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And when you get that kind of determination, when you get that kind of fervor, you will interrupt church, you will interrupt a council meeting, you will interrupt the President of the United States if you have to, because you understand that what you've been going through is beneath what God created you to be. And when you're ready to be more, you will tell your enemy, I want what God has for me, and I want it right. Come on and give them a praise if you know what I'm saying. Lord have mercy. Somebody praise him right here. I feel like throwing my shoe out in the crowd. <laughs> Fighting to enjoy the promised land. Fighting to enjoy the promise. Already promised since the days of Abraham. Already promised since Abraham and Sarah did that impossible thing. Believing that God can bring life out of a dead situation. The nation was already promised to them. These Hebrews, these Habiru. Hebrew comes from the word Habiru, meaning outsider. To know the Egyptians, the Egyptians are known because they come from Egypt. The Syrians because they come from Syria. The Americans because they come from America. But the word Hebrew denotes no land because they were a landless people. They called them Habiru, outsider, meaning what? You will not be known by the land you live on, but you will be known by your connection to God. Look at somebody say, I'm Habiru tonight. Outsiders struggling and fighting to get what's already theirs. You will notice, I did not read it, but in earlier moments in the 10th chapter, you, you will notice that the writer tells us that Joshua, I love this, Joshua climbed all night just to be able to fight all day. Lord have mercy. He fought, he climbed all night just to be able to fight all day. Most Negroes climb all night and want to rest all day. But when you know that there is something waiting for you, you will climb all night and fight all day. Woo, God. 
Shake somebody's hand like you go shake it off and tell them, say, neighbor, I'll fight you for my future. Tell them, say, I'll pull that weave out your head for my children. I will knock you on your back for my destiny. I'll fight all day. I'll climb all night. I'll stay awake in the wee hours of the night. But I refuse to sit here and live in this mess for another three years. Oh, God. Stop somebody and say, how bad do you want it? Because most of us have been destined and promised to, by God to be better than what we are. But we are not willing to do what it takes to get what God has promised us. And God will not give you anything that you are not willing to work to keep. And God will not manifest anything that you have not developed the will to hold on to. I feel a praise about to hit this building. I feel a shout coming. I need about a hundred people to get in the devil's face and say, I want it so bad. I will work for it. I'll work my fingers to the bone, but I got to be better than this. Uh. Come on, honey. Come on, honey. I need the real folks. The rest of these Negroes need to watch us praise him. Take 30 seconds and go ahead and declare that I'm serious about my future. I want it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Climbing all night so that he can fight all day. Oh, Reverend, I could preach and hoop that right there. Climbing all night so that he can fight all day. Interesting thing that I should posit to you, Nietzsche calls it, write this down, Frederick Nietzsche calls it that dogged Dionysian determination. Spell it any way you want to. <laughs> that dogged Dionysian determination. The will, the courage to have it, to possess it. Martin King called it the fierce urgency of now. That notion that I am right at the edge. Oh God, I'm right at the edge. I'm right at the edge of possibility. And I refuse to cow and go back into the darkness empty handed. When you have labored and loved and given all you had and cooked somebody's meals and washed their clothes and stayed with them when they acted a fool, you get to the edge and you tell God, I refuse to go back with nothing. Got to get something out of this. Let somebody say, I got to get something out of this. But it is here and I would submit to you a further consideration that you must remember that sometimes the struggle is what makes the prize valuable. Consider it now, consider it. Sometimes the thing in itself is not as valuable if it did not come with pain. Oh Lord, sometimes it is the struggle that endows the thing itself with endless value. Then therefore, we must ask this question, if we got it apart from the struggle, then what would be the value of it? What would salvation be if Jesus walked across the street and saved us? What would salvation be if Jesus drank a cup of tea and that was salvation? Part of the miracle and, and the liberty of nature of the salvific story is that it, 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 it involved blood, death, suffering and pain. And he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulder. It is in the context of the fight that salvation becomes 
so valuable so valuable do you know it's not the things people gave me that taught me anything it's the things I had to fight for can I get some grown folks to say amen I'm telling you people in your life who are committed to giving you whatever you want are not serving your needs there ought to be somebody in your life who says you're gonna have to work for this yourself because if I give you a house but no wisdom to go with the house then you'll keep the house for a week and lose it you have to go through the struggle because write this down if wisdom is what you get when you don't get what you want if wisdom is what you get when you don't get what you want then even when you don't get what you want you still get something let me try it over here part of what God is trying to say to us tonight is that even in the desperate discouraging hours of defeat and pain and depression where it seems like you are scratching crawling crying trying to push a rock up a hill God says in that moment you experience a value that you couldn't have if I gave it to you and that's why you have to be willing touch somebody and say to fight another day <clears throat> now at last we come to the passage itself and hear Joshua pray an unusual prayer the battle is raging they're fighting to receive the land that's already promised and Joshua prays to God and says, as the Amorites are falling into defeat, he says, oh Lord, paraphrasing, don't let the sun go down on this fight. When most people pray, they ask God to give them a season of relaxation. If I could reach in the, into the solipsism of the minds of the people in this room, I probably could discover that most of our prayers this week have been for ease and for peace and for order and for paid bills and miraculous things like that. Touch him, I say he's talking about you right now. <laughs> but when Joshua prays this prayer, it is not for relaxation. He is asking God, keep the sun in the sky so that I might fight a little longer. Lord, he says, paraphrasing of course, don't let the sun go down on this battle. Don't let the sun go down on this fight. He's saying more or less in these verses, I am enjoying the fight too much. After all I've been through, all that I have suffered, now to see my enemy back up in defeat, he said, just when I'm getting good at this, don't you let the sun go down and mess up this good fight. Oh, I feel a shout about to break out in my spirit. You must understand that there, that, that, now see, there, there's such a thing as a fight and then there is a good fight. Joshua said this is a good fight. A good fight is when you have waited all your life to get to a particular place and God says here you are but to have it you got to raise up on somebody. Stop somebody and say that's a good fight. You can mess around and send me an email if you want to. You can send me a text message if you feel like it. But I will knock you into the middle of next week. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
when you have been broken and defeated and lied on and cheated on you are not afraid to tell somebody I will beat the hell out of you if I have to to get what God has for me oh God he says Lord he says Lord don't let the sun go down on this fight. <clears throat> there is so much wisdom in this. Can I have a few more moments? Listen, if we would just learn how to enjoy the fight, we want benefits without battle. We want wealth without work. We want activity without accomplishment. We want the fruit but hate the tree. Huh? We want daybreak, but no midnight. We want joy, but no sorrow. And Joshua shows us the dirty little secret of success. The dirty secret of greatness is that you will never win until you learn to enjoy the fight. Stop resenting the fact that you have to fight. Stop praying those menial, ridiculous prayers where you ask God to let you avoid battle because you want to have a sweatless victory. I don't want no sweatless victory. I want a victory when I get there with the sweat dripping from my brow and the blood from my cheek and the pain from the side of my forehead I will look at every devil in the face and say I earned this moment nobody gave me this I earned the right to I feel a pray I earned the right to praise him and the reason I clap and celebrate and dance is because I almost died to get here. Is there anybody in here who can say, Dr. Sean, I earned the right to clap my hands. I earned the right to get up on my feet when I feel like it. I earned the right to live in my own house uh, and cook my own food. Uh, I feel a praise coming. Uh, I feel something about to break out in here. Come on and put your hands together and give the... Ooh, uh, let me hurry. Let me hurry. Write this down. Write this down. Stop resenting the fact that you have to fight. For it is only the people who fight that change the world. You lazy believers who want the world gift wrapped up for you will never change anything. Martin King was barely five foot seven, but he knew how to fight. He was willing to fight and to do what it took to make sure that your children and your grandchildren would not grow up in the world that he was sentenced to grow up in. I submit to you tonight, write this down, that greatness is losing yourself in the process. Greatness is not just the end of the journey. Greatness is learning how to relish in the process, how to find joy and peace and happiness in the battle that one has to go through to get to where one is going so that you're not waiting to the end to celebrate. But you can do like God did on the third day, stop and say, this is a good fight. I submit to you tonight, my brothers and my sisters, when you understand that there are so many men and women among us who want the prize, but ask God to remove the pain, you don't make any sense to me. Three people clap. I'm telling you, you must embrace the journey that you are on right now. What happened this morning was not a mistake. 
What happened last week was not a curse. It was what you have to be willing to do to get what you asked for. What you are suffering from, the depression, the heartbreak, the loneliness, is not a curse of the devil. It is the fight of your life. And you must fight to have what you've been praying for. Woo, God, I feel like, oh, it's interesting. It's interesting because you are right on the edge of the greatest moment you ever had in your life and you think pain is an indication that it's not going to happen. But ask any woman in here, the closer the pain gets, the sooner the baby is about to be born. And is there anybody in here who can tell the devil, since I'm already in pain, I'm going to get me a reward. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Excuse me while I praise him right here. Lord have mercy. Okay. Come on, put your hands together and bless the name of this God. I need every hurting person, every starving person, every desperate person, take 30 seconds and tell the devil, I don't resent my fight. Woo! I don't resent it. I don't resent it. Joshua says to God, he said, God, keep the sun up in the sky. I'm accomplishing too much now. Is that your testimony? God, don't let the sun go down on the fight. Because I finally got to the place where I'm too grown to be scared. I'm too strong to be insecure. I waited all my life to be the woman that I am or the man that I am. And I don't want the sun to go down until I whoop my enemies behind. I want to beat every devil. I want to beat every backstabbing, lying, low-down, dirty friend. Hey, I feel a shout coming. I want to beat everybody who said I'd never be nothing. I want them to see me do what I'm doing right now. Slap somebody and say, neighbor, I ain't ready to die yet. I can't die in a car accident. I will not die on a plane crash. Cancer can't have me. Diabetes can't have me. I will not have a stroke until I do what God has called me to do. If that's your testimony, give God a crazy praise of this. That's what Joshua is saying. Joshua says to God, he says, God, I need more time. Tell somebody say, I need more time. I'm just getting good at this. I need more time. Don't let the sun go down because I need another year. I need another 10 years. I need another 20 years. I need another lifetime because I'm finally getting good at being myself. I waited all my life. I waited all my life to be who I was. And now that I'm here, God, don't you let the sun go down until I rise and every devil sees me rising. Am I preaching to anybody right now? Am I talking to anybody right now? Take 30 seconds and praise the name of your God. I feel a sound coming. I feel a praise coming. I got to keep it together. I got to keep it together. I got to keep it together. It's interesting because there's something wonderful about watching yourself do what you have never been able to do. And that's where Joshua is. He's watching himself do what they have never been able to do. And he says to himself, he says, God, I'm watching myself accomplish something. And I want to be able to see it not in the night season. But I want to see myself win by daylight hours. Stop somebody and say, I want a daylight victory. Night victories are the victories that you win and nobody even knew you were fighting. When you lose 10 pounds, that's a night victory. When you don't slit your husband's throat, that's a night victory. When you don't walk out on your wife, that's a night victory. 
because most people didn't even know you were fighting that battle. When you emerged up out of depression, most people didn't even know you were depressed, let alone to know that you won the battle against depression. Now, tell somebody that's a night victory. When you wake up and say good morning to people that don't deserve it, that's a night victory. Because they had no idea you wanted to slap them in the face the night before. That's a night victory. When you, when, when you get, when you reconcile with a friend that didn't even know they had hurt your feelings, but you're able to embrace them anyway, tell somebody, that's a night victory. But I heard Joshua say, Lord, I don't want a night victory. I want victory by daylight hours. I want to win, and I want my enemy to see me win. I want to come into a glory, and I want those who say that never be nothing to see me win this battle this time. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, I don't want a night victory. And I want to win this fight by daylight hours. A daylight victory is when you get the job and you don't have the credentials. You lied on your resume and you didn't graduate from high school. But God made a way out of no way. And everybody who said you'd never be nothing has to watch you go to work in the morning with your head up and your chest out. Slap somebody and say, neighbor, I don't want a night victory. I want one by daylight hours. A daylight victory is when you change your life and you go from being a drug addict to being a child of God that's been reared with the gospel in your mouth. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, I don't want a night victory, but I want one by daylight hours. I used to be disgusting. I used to hate myself, didn't like who I was, but you can throw your head back now and say, I'm loving this. I'm loving all of this every inch of it, every stretch mark, every pimple, every bunion, every bad hair, every hair follicle, and I want my enemy to see me love myself. Give God a praise in here. I, I gotta hurry. 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 I got to hurry, but I hear the Lord telling somebody that you about to win by daylight hours, that this time your enemies are going to have to watch you win all the years you had to watch them have victory all the years you had to watch them get what you were still waiting for i heard the lord say that this time is your time and you're not gonna have to watch nobody david put it like this thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies what was david saying he was saying that this time my enemies have to watch me eat this time I get to eat a meal this time. Lean over and tell somebody. Tell them, say, neighbor, this time you're going to watch me eat. I feel like preaching. I feel like lifting him up. Let's have some church right now. I heard the Lord say that if you would just trust him just a little while longer, he would give you back the years that the canker worms and the locusts have stolen. He would reach in the darkness and give you a victory that's worthy of the light. Is there anybody in here who can say, I'm ready for it? I'm ready for it. After all I've been through, I'm ready for it. And I don't want to win in the dark. I want to win by night. I want to win in the daylight. I want you to see me with my head up and my chest out. I want you to see me with a smile on my face. Matter of fact, you don't have to wait until Sunday to do it. But you ought to get in your neighbor's face and put a smile on your face and say right now, I got a daylight victory because a month ago, I couldn't clap like this. A month ago, I couldn't smile like this. Uh, but he made a way where there was no way. 
he brought me out of it he brought me through it and I heard Joshua say that he fights for me give your neighbor a high five and say neighbor he fights for me he fights for me he fights for me he fights for me, me. while I'm in this church he's in my house fighting for me backing up every devil tying up every witch breaking up every warlock dealing with the bill finding a way to pay the mortgage delivering my children healing my body he fights for me right now he's fighting for me shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and say he's in my future fighting for me he's already at my job he's already sitting there he's already cut the computer on he's already cast the check he fights for me he fights for me I feel a shout coming I feel a praise coming somebody take 30 seconds and go ahead and lose it in here all the cute saints watch me praise him watch me give him glory because I won and I didn't deserve to win I won and I didn't have what it takes but he kept the sun in the sky long enough for me to find myself he kept the sun in the sky long enough for me to win this battle I heard David say my soul shall make her boast in the Lord will you take 50 seconds and make a boast in the Lord will you take 50 seconds and make a boast in the Lord come on and boast come on and boast come on and boast I feel victory in the house I feel victory in the house I feel it in here I feel it 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 excuse me man but I feel sanctified coming up in here I feel it and I feel it right now give God a shout if you know interesting he's saying he's saying God I'm finally getting good at this is that your testimony you see when you were 15 you thought you were good but you don't get good till you get about 30 and when you get in that 30 you find your stroke says anybody know what I'm talking about when you get in your 40s you find your place when you get in your 50s you find your voice when you get in your 60s you find your courage when you get 70 you do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it and you don't care I find somebody saying I'm just getting good at this I don't want the sun to go down because I'm just getting good at this if I was going to give this sermon another title I would call it finally good Finally good. I would call it finally me. Lord, don't let the sun go down. Because I'm finally getting good. And I'm just not ready to die. Yes, yes, I have to fight. But I'm learning how to enjoy this battle. I'm learning how I don't always have what I need, but you make a way out of nowhere. I go into I go into panic, and you deliver a promise. And I'm learning to enjoy this dance that we do. It is a dance that we do with the divine, as we teeter and totter on the brink of destruction. And each time we're about to fall, he leans over and pulls us back to life. And 
Now I'm learning how to do this dance good. I'm learning how to dance with you, Jesus. I'm learning how we dance together. My dance ain't like how my mama danced. But I'm learning my dance with you. And don't let the music stop. Don't let the sun go down. Because I'm enjoying the dance that we do now. Is that your testimony? Throw your head back and say, God, may I have this dance tonight? Hands up all over the building. 